Jamatu, the Yobe state capital, gradually opening its eyelids from the blindness of insurgency. Your first step in town, a ship shipped roundabout anchored. Looking over your shoulders, small scale businesses, wondering if the wares sold here were uploaded from the ship. But steps into the stories of these resilient people are horrible and heartbreaking testimonies. A case study and the role model is, uh, is Gujibar local government, a town, uh, the non state armed group have stayed there for almost two years. After the liberation of the town, the town, almost 80% of the town has been burned down. When His Excellency came on board, road construction was uh, immediately started. Hospitals were reconstructed, equipment were provided, electrification was uh, done. Schools were constructed and public buildings were constructed and people, then the next aspect is how to empower the people and the economy. For a taste of the pills they have swallowed within those dark periods, we travelled out of Damaturu to Kukareta, a small town with a big heart. Kukareta is a community that has opened its arms and embraced the displays as a result of insurgency. Droves of them come to this community where the leader of this community embraced them and give them places to live. So far, they have another generation of their people who in fact don't even know where they come from except this place, Kukareta. And only God knows what each one of them may become in the near future. The man who opened the gate of the small town to tens of thousands of people running away from the bites of insurgency opens up on his actions. I could remember the around 2014-15, there are about 38,000 people living in Kukareta. That time the state government started bringing tampolin inside the town, outside. We make a camp for them. The camp is there. Gradually when we see just people are shitting at any time, becoming another thing. That's why I still went down there to the local government to start advising them that we can be able to sacrifice our uh, floats, our palm to these people if they can come and demarcate it to give them as a float to, for them to start it. Okay, okay, okay. If so, it's good, it's good. We just started dividing them, everybody, 60, 40, to, di to give it a... Why by 40%, they will give you a float in the field of uh, uh, compensation. And later on, the remain one, uh, that 60%, we can give it, give it to everybody, those who can be able to stay. And later on, even that time, uh, they don't have even the material for building. They don't have it. So, United Nations Refugees High Commission has come and give it to about 300 people for them, zinc, uh, cement, flywood, all this one. And later on, this has started coming. And later on, still I went to the back to the state government for another assistant, CSDP. CSDP. That CSDP has come here and started building another houses for the, for individual. That about 80 houses CSDP has already built. It. When you go around, I will show you the houses individually. That one, at least uh, when you have yeah, around 50,000, they can be able to build you a house. That 50,000 is only for you to buy a zinc roof and so forth. And that is it. So. Those are the, how the, some of the people they started getting. But we still have people in local government are like Borno, in Borno State, Konduga local government, Demboa local government, Kaga local government, all these people. There are many of them, the people. There, all of them, they are here. Now, the number of the displaced who found home in Kukareta are twice the number of its original inhabitants. Many of the displaced have moved from tents to homes. Wakil took us to his house where he's breeding a new life for his family. 
da yara ngonori da na mokoche mu da kaba da na in area na mu duka sun shiga boko haram young boys from neighboring villages and communities have joined the boko haram movement they now joined forces and began to attack us after several attempts to persuade us to be part of them. They killed our children. And when we saw that they have overpowered us, we all began to flee our villages and ended up at Kukareta. And we have been here for nine years now. Children being childish, homemakers pounding out precious molds of renewable energy. We are preparing charcoal, the kind of charcoal, which is environmentally friendly. Some NGOs came here and trained us. And since we have started producing this charcoal, we have said goodbye to smoke and no more cutting trees in the bush. And our children have stopped going to the bushes and now have concentrated in their school. And again, we have stopped experiencing health challenges like asthma and knife diseases that can be caused by smoke. <laughs> From Kukarita, we set out to Potiskum. Potiskum is no doubt the busiest city in Yoruba state. Walking through one of the streets, they call Sokal Kia, will be confronted by your left and right workshops, parks of trucks. Trucks that are all involved in the movement of goods and services to and from different cities across Nigeria, and this shows that this city has been in business for a very long time. People doing what they know how to do best were the most vulnerable picking their sources of livelihood. Here I took interest in the people's addiction to the business of haulage, which has become a tradition. Uh, we have the experience of different uh, kind of trucks. Uh, if I can uh, tell you the different kind of trucks that we have, uh, we will be using, at least you will get no less than 20. Uh, being this business, many of, the, many of us have us inherited it from their grandparents parents, down to us as of now so that uh, we used to board them from uh, different countries, Germany, Japan, uh, Holland, and others. And uh, being, uh, as, as we have the idea, we know how to manage each and every one. Uh, this association, uh, it, it helps us because uh, we used to share ideas about the business, and many of us understand how to how to gather ourselves, discuss the challenges that we have, and find a way out to develop our business. Because uh, transportation, it has uh, many challenges. So that uh, if you do not unite yourself, eh, it will become very difficult for you to run the business. But uh, through the organization, uh, we have achieved a lot because we used to sit down, rub, rub our minds, find the way out to, uh, to make a very good business because we have been dealing with uh, different companies, uh, different uh, dealers, so that uh, uh, if we do not share ideas, we will get a lot of challenges in the in, in the in the market. 
by freezing the flat rate, the rate of the transportation, because if we do not unite ourselves, uh, we can't get the same length, uh, idea to carry uh, goods from here down to Lagos. We used to share idea, we carry it at the same price, even if there is pro, uh, if there is an uh, interval, it will not hide. Because of the wildfire growth of the business of haulage in Patiskum, maintenance becomes imperative. So every twist and turn you make leads you to a truck garage. It mechanics or those who broke boundaries in the fabrication of different kinds of truck bodies. I started this work when I saw my friends learning the job. I began gradually until I become a job man and subsequently my own boss with more than 20 people under me. And you know, the people of Putiskum have long been in the business of college. Those days, the businessmen usually go to Joss for repairs and body building of trucks. Then some renowned mechanics in Potiskum began to repair and build the bodies of trucks. And those businessmen stopped going to Joss. Now we are experts and the owners of those trucks don't have to go to elsewhere anymore. <laughs> Yobi is indeed walking its work from marathon to 100 meters in its race to free its people from the chain of poverty and brainwash. A final bell from one primary school in the state gives you an idea of how fast education is being used to counter the devil's narrative, especially on the gold child. I've been built, we have mega schools and model schools. It might interest you to know that one of the school, secondary schools here in Kara has 14,000 students. So uh, education-wise also people are going to school and we must uh, congratulate the efforts of the governor to see that uh, normalcy has returned and economic activities has resumed. So I think uh, this, with all these uh, factors, has made you to notice that everybody is going about his business unhindered. So we must thank the government for this, their efforts. And also, Potuskum has one of the, is the commercial center of Yobe State. There is the population. So that has also contributed to the economic activities. With the delirium of fear off their minds, the abandoned farmlands are popping out grains and nuts. The markets becoming vibrant, or the sword ships and the knives doing the needful. Great institutions of learning focusing on agriculture puts the state an edge ahead of its consumption needs. The people are indeed testing the honey of quality health care from top to bottom with child and maternal care a top priority or into stagnations arising from insurgency. 
out of the 178 um, wards, focal primary health care cent uh, centers, um, so far 138 have been um, completed. Um, and the um, infrastructure um, where was done in line with the um, stand minimum standards of primary health care in Nigeria um, that was um, given by the National Primary Health Care um, Development um, Agency. Um, one very laudable thing that, um, was, that, that was achieved in this was the fact that there are certain communities where um, they didn't have these primary health care centers, but all of a sudden um, they, not, they now had a, a, a standard primary health care center that has about 13 rooms. Um, together with um, the commissariate, um, infra, uh, the equipment that were also um, needed for them to, um, you know, provide services. In addition to that, the service package, that is the, the, the type of services that are provided, I mean, all the uh, others um, have also been upgraded to provide for them to provide secondary um, services. Um, again, um, to ease access to tertiary health care services, um, the, um, the government also upgraded um, some general hospitals into specialist hospitals. Um, these include um, the specialist hospital in Portis, the general hospital in Portisco, which was upgraded to a specialist hospital, the one in Geshua, the one in Gaidam, the one in Bunyadi. Um, this is in addition to um, the one here in um, Damaturu. Um, it is not only upgrade by nomenclature, um, it is also matched by upgrade with the facilities and equipment. And as such, the laboratories were upgraded to provide tertiary um, lab services. Um, from chemistry to hematology to microbiology, and then of course the radiology. Um, 4D ultrasound scan machines. Um, there were also um, digital X-ray machines um, in all, and then um, in addition to that, um, electronic medical records were also um, put in place in those um, facilities. Um, in addition to that, um, government of His Excellency also went into partnership with some tertiary um, institutions, federal tertiary institutions like the ones in Meduguri, Gombe. Um, Nguru, Azare, um, even as far as Kano, and we had this relationship where specialists come to the state, uh, to these specialist hospitals, because since they are called specialist hospitals, you must have specialists that will come and provide um, specialized services. The wildfire of the impact of global warming has also hit the state below its belt, leaving roads and bridges collapsing. The state emergency agency says it's not folding its arms, but up and doing. Of course, His Excellency was, is mindful of the need to respond to the flight of victims in respect of where they are and what type of disaster has been affecting them. Over the years, uh, SEMA has been transformed by the mandate of His Excellency and through his vision of uh, making it more digital, more people-oriented and people-centered. So much such that the time it takes for us to respond to disaster has been reduced to the barest minimum. Less than 24 hours, we we'll respond, evacuate victims immediately to the hospital, treat them free, look at the needs of the victim, conduct assessment concurrently, and respond to their needs. So vis a vis, these are some of the responses. And natural disaster comes in, and of course, agencies like SEMA need to be proactive. In May 2020, 2022, when we brief His Excellency on the uh, focus and uh, reports of NIMED and other national agencies that gives prediction of uh, flood outlook and other things. His Excellency directed that this, the agency should be repositioned and be, remain alert in, in case of emergency and also advise those that are at high risk to relocate and also ensure that we mobilize resources to respond. Of course, we are alert, but unfortunately, this uh, 2022 flood, the magnitude came very high and it's global, not just uh, local, and it comes with a lot of uh, new dimensions. Areas that have not seen flood for like 60 years have witnessed flooding. Roads have been disconnected, but that does not stop uh, gov governance from responding. Immediately after any disaster, we respond. We ensure that victims are not trapped. Those that are trapped, we ensure that we evacuated them. We make sure that uh, they will provide alternative routes to access and provide life-saving support to 
to the victims. We call UN, UN partners, INGOs on table. We presented our gaps and they started keying in. The magnitude is increasing. There are still worse cases, especially in areas of Jakusko, going down to Bursari, Tarmua, Gaidem, Gujba. There are a lot of some cases, but the, we hope we, in the coming few days it will reduce. But uh, the prediction is not encouraging. Namit is still showing some alerts and we're encouraging high risk communities to relocate. Dobe has seen the good, bad and the ugly, but it is out a conqueror with a lamp lighting the path of progress. Social media as a channel of communication.